Hello, everyone. Welcome. We will be we will begin the webcast shortly. Some individuals are still entering the session. We will begin momentarily. Okay, let's get going. Welcome to today's episode of Staffing Tech TV, using communications data to make intelligent decisions. Staffing Tech TV is brought to you by Staffing Tech 2018 premier sponsor, DICE, and conference sponsors, eTechie and JXT. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, Staffing Tech Conference and Summit 2019 is coming up in Nashville uh, in just a couple weeks. Uh, the Blockchain Summit on day one is sold out. We have limited two-day passes for 11, April 11th, 10th and 11th, excuse me, that are available until April 3rd. During each episode of Staffing Tech TV, we focus on one technology within the staffing tech stack. Today's most mature and successful staffing firms are rapidly, <clears throat> excuse me, rapidly building out and investing in technologies to build out their staffing tech stack. Again, today we are joined by Andrew Jones, Chief Revenue Officer of CloudCall. Uh, he will be speaking about how to use communications data to make intelligent decisions within your staffing firm. Uh, Maurice, with that, I'd like to hand it over to you. Awesome. Well, thanks, Christine, and welcome, everyone. Thank you, Andy, for joining us today. Looking forward to seeing you at Staffing Tech uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, before we dive into things, can you please give our audience a brief background on Cloud Call, who you are, what you do, and where your company's headed. Sure, good afternoon, everybody, uh, or good morning, depending on where you are. Uh, my name is Andrew Jones, uh, or Andy Jones. I work with Cloud Call. Um, and, and from a background point of view, Cloud Call helps businesses uh, turn communication into intelligent data, um, thereby enabling them to make better, more insightful decisions and to build better relationships with clients and get more done quicker. That's essentially what we do. Um, you can see from uh, the slide that's up at the moment that actually uh, Cloud Call represent a whole load of different features to help you in order to do that. Um, but we really help businesses and users turn that intelligent data into um, uh, work that can capture what they need to get out of a system. So it's not all about um, just how you capture your communications and drop it into your CRM. Um, it's just as much to do with what you do with it once it's in there and how you get it out in a way that can help you uh, make productivity changes to your business and be more informed. Yeah, so, you know, in, in the past, our communication systems have really been sort of disconnected from our, our technology uh, uh, systems or CRM, ATS, et cetera, but everything is so, is so tightly integrated now um, and it's so much more sophisticated. So uh, uh, tell us a little bit about how the changing communications landscape has affected the technology and methodologies that are used by successful staffing and recruiting firms. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's a really interesting question. Um, so I'm a little bit old and gray. So I, I, I put this up to give you guys a, a feel for how things have evolved. Uh, and, and really, it's about the speed in the evolution of technology um, over that last 50 years, um, which is really matched only by the speed of, of the communication revolution that's happening right now. You know, mobile phones only appeared right in the middle of that revolution timeline. And uh, you can see here that the revolution is not stopping anytime soon. Uh, the last five to 10 years has seen the emergence of an ability to avoid a call and to welcome a text. So messaging is now common parlance and, and that's been the biggest change over the last five to 10 years. You know, what I'm seeing when I talk to our customers and prospects, the thing they want to talk about most is the need for digital transformation uh, and the adoption of that digital transformation in their business. Um, and our conversation then moves on really to what that means for the leadership uh, in the staffing industry. How does the leadership in staffing industry um, embrace that um, revolution and make sure that they're up to speed? Uh, and what does that being up to speed need for them when they're running their businesses? Does that help? Yeah, yes, yeah, very much so. So what? Uh, so another question. So what changes in the industry have forced a period of digital transformation to break through? <laughs> okay, so um, I don't want to kill you guys with stats. I'm sure you're used to that. But there's three stats um, just to let you have a little munch on them. Um, and they're the three that I find most interesting. I mean, as a baby boomer myself, just 
Um, you know, I started work back in 1985 and, uh, with my career, and, and I helped start all this really, um, uh, being part of that group of people who had a mobile brick in their hand, you know, and, and soon after that, an actual wired car phone in my company Mazda when I was sort of 24, I thought I was the bee's knees. You know, little did I know that I was actually helping to start all this by, by doing that. Over the you know, next three generations, what we call Gen X, uh, the millennials, much maligned millennials, Gen Z, and now Gen Alpha, my 17 year old is a, is a Gen Alpha. They, they've kind of taken the ball and run with it, much like Forrest Gump, you know, they're still running. Um, it, it used to be the mobile call that was freedom itself. Um, you know, we, we were still amazed, some of us still are amazed at the freedom we get from being able to carry around an ever smaller client, uh, make calls, take calls wherever we are. But now the freedom to some is not actually having to make a call or take a call at all. It's, it's, it's being able to only really do that if you really have to. Um, and businesses and their leaderships, um, as far as I'm sure you're all aware, are in a battle for talent. And, and that war for talent is driving, um, you know, the, the feelings that our employees have now, what they need to be able to do their jobs, what they need to be able to um, be the components of that revolution with, with uh, communication. So, you know, let me try and explain. We don't have enough talent. It's increasingly expensive. It's very difficult for us to find and it's even more difficult for us to keep. Um, as leadership, as professionals in this market. Everybody is vying for that talent. You know, the best talent is the quickest talent secured. So this service being provided to your clients in staffing is actually driving the transformation in the way we communicate. Uh, the need for flexibility, the need for uh, mobility and agility. If recruitment businesses are to aspire, uh, as I think we all are, to consistent growth, it, it seems that there first must be understanding of what this revolution is and how to keep up to speed with it. If those same businesses are then to scale, uh, there must be understanding and adoption of the zeitgeist that is this digital transformation. Is that fair enough? Yeah, that makes sense. And you know, it's interesting because uh, you know, not that long ago, there were just a few ways of of communicating. It was either in person or or by phone. People yeah. had mobile phones, but now uh, there's so many ways that people engage with each other, and and we need uh, communications infrastructure to support that if we want to effectively uh, land the best candidates. So question, what, what are the priorities that recruitment organizations have that are able to be positively impacted by modern communications? Sure, sure, absolutely. Okay, well, you know, my, my answer to this, there, there's your, your slide, speed, mobility, and the ability to build better relationships. I mean, fairly obvious, right? Um, it, it's where you try and link those and align them to the communication um, that, that's involved is, is where a little bit of thought is, is needed. So it's inevitable uh, that to achieve growth in our businesses, we've got to do so in a competitive market, right? Um, you know, if I should ever these days have a conversation with a grumpy client, thankfully, it's not often these days. Um, our business uh, is growing up. We're no longer in software cutting edge startup mode. So, you know, that conversation is not normally because his call quality is slightly off. It's because a function on a handset is not working uh, or, or even it's not because we can't supply number ranges to northern China, for example. Um, really, um, it's mostly because they need our innovation and technology around that integration functionality and they mm. need it as quick as possible. Um, you know, they need to enable their speed to market to be faster. They can't chance losing a job or a client where a job is coming to them. They, they can't chance leaving a candidate waiting. Uh, or, or miss validation and, and connectivity with that client uh, in a fast enough and accurate enough way. Um, because to do so for, for this audience is leaving money on the table, right? Uh, and handing the game to competition. So technology innovation is, in staffing anyway, is now being really driven, uh, not simply by if you interact with clients and candidates, but just as much by the speed and quality of how well you interact. Uh, mm. And that subtle difference is really apparent. If people are the currency in which we trade and their desired skill sets are the prize for gaining that interaction, then communi communication and um, uh, resultant business intelligence, if you like, is the means by which you stay ahead and repeatedly give yourself the best chance of winning in that competitive environment. Yeah, I like that point that you're making about uh, not only is it is it how you're able to communicate, but also the quality of the communications and the speed with which you're able to respond. Um, I think those are all, all factors in being able to 
attract. Uh, and everyone knows that staffing is a speed game, so we need to be able to get access to the best candidates as quickly as possible and communicate with them the way they want to communicate with us. So you're absolutely right. I mean, the single biggest factor that I hear from leaders um, is speed. Quality, yes, but not before speed. Mm -hmm. um, and as one of our customers, I think, if I can get this right, said to me, um, it was a week ago, I think, if I can't be at the table in the first place, then the quality of my hand that I'm holding is useless, which I thought was quite telling um, to yep. take the, the card play analogy. You know, he was suggesting that businesses like his need to be able to apply speed and volume to their ability to source, validate, and action their available business. You know, have quality conversations, uh, have those exchanges, those negotiations, those interactions, uh, have them on multiple devices, um, in and out of offices, uh, near or away from um, the point of interaction with your client. Have them, but also be able to capture them and then use them better. Um, you know, business, business and their, you know, businesses and leadership uh, are in that battle for that war on talent. Um, you know, it's, as I said earlier, increasingly expensive, difficult to find. Um, and whilst everyone is vying for it, it, it is um, fortunately for me, but unfortunately for, for your, uh, your pocketbook, I would think, um, technology that actually enables you to do that, uh, not just the, the qualification and professionalism of your, your skilled workforce. Yeah, and and as I mentioned before, the the technology is really uh, you know so tightly integrated now in in one uh, cohesive system. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, a little bit about the technology in, in detail here. So okay, so let's flick you through some things um, so we can give you some actual views. So what you're looking at there, um, the, the term power dialing. This is all about tear sheet management, the available market that we have and our ability to be to be quicker in getting to it. So where can you be saving time in that action? What if your team could make twice as many calls a day by power dialing through a list of candidates within your CRM automated by the technology that you have? Um, in terms of um, uh, where are we in terms of initiating calls, you know, click to call. It, this is a term that's thrown around now as being technology of last year, year before. But, you know, the, the amount of time um, that you can um, save and, and the increased accuracy by simply clicking on a number to begin that call, um, it, it shouldn't be lost on, uh, on new users of technology. Um, and then in terms of, um, you know, reaching more candidates, I, I can't believe um, the speed with which we've moved from um, SMS and messaging one-to-one -to, -one to a broadcast methodology. You know, mm -hmm. um, texting 100 candidates at once to check on availability or interest, um, and then being able to handle the, the repeat inbound traffic that you get from that outbound broadcast um, is now the thing that most of my, my clients are talking to me about at sea level. Um, they don't necessarily want to understand how, they just want to be able to do it and then be able to handle it. And it's all about that speed of collection, speed to market. Yeah, so um, I think this is another a good point here about mobility, being able to continue to um, do your business, you know, anywhere, anytime, 24-7. So tell us a little bit more about how modern communications extends out to uh, mobile access anywhere, anytime. Okay, so so this is my, I, I referred earlier to the fact that, you know, um, we have uh, those younger groups now. Uh, our employee workforce is demanding of, of the ability to be mobile, flexible, agile, uh, and to be able to reach and do what they want to do in various locations. And obviously, that, that's got to be in, in a combination, in alignment with all the different clients they can use. So, um, you know, you've got um, uh, iPads and um, various devices that, that, um, that, that belong to the mobile phone classification, PCs, soft phones, um, the always on mentality is an increasingly common term today. Although if you're my wife, that, that always drives her nuts. She'd rather I wasn't. Uh, but nevertheless, we are. And whether we like it or not, and are ready for it or not, we're now required to be leaders that show flexibility, give, deliver that flexibility. And why wouldn't we? Um, you know, we're increasingly enable our employees to be interoperable. Um, and with it as leaders, custodians of our business, we immediately present ourselves with another problem. And that is, you know, how do we show that flexibility and deliver that agility and still be able to capture those interactions that happen on multiple devices using multiple applications in locations that are 
effectively remote from your office? Um, and the answer is, um, you know, being able to deliver mobile calls and texts from anywhere at any time, um, having the mobility of what you would normally see in an integration with a CRM uh, on, on your main screen at your office. Um, so it means we have to consider providing, you know, flexible mobile texting and calls alongside that deep integration wherever people are. So it's about security and interoperability. Yeah, so if I'm remote from the office and I need to text somebody, um, A, I should be able to do it through the system, and then that text should be tracked back into my CRM so I can refer back to it so I know exactly what was communicated to the candidate and it wasn't stored on my local phone that might go with the recruiter if if they were to leave, for example. So I knew we should have been offering you a job, Maurice. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Right. So you know, it's not just being able to do that, but you want to keep the strength of the brand identity wherever your employees are by showing your company phone number and 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 being able to present yourselves as you, even though you're not at your main office or from your office network. And that's for both outbound and inbound calls. So you're absolutely right, totally. And, and again, capturing it in your CRM. Okay, so you can be mobile, you can be working on a variety of devices, you can be using voice and text, but the ability to capture that, drop it into the right place um, in, in your CRM, never missing a conversation, um, is what we need to do to keep up with uh, even the basis of technology at the moment. So, you know, access and store all information in one place at any time. And wherever your team is, make sure your interactions uh, are caught and dropped into your database CRM ATS. Yeah, what about support for inbound calls that come in? You know, one of the things that always takes time is when uh, somebody calls and then, okay, I've got to look up your record. I mean, what? how do you support inbound calls that come in um, and, uh, you know, pull up records so we can get right to the data that recruiters are using? Okay, so in the same way as you've got click to call, um, where um, you'll click on a number and it will bring up the record um, that you're calling out to. It's exactly the same inverse. So if you've got a call coming in from a, um, a DDI that's actually stored in your system, then it will bring up that record on your screen so that you can actually be working on that at the time you take that call. Um, and, and to be honest, it's a, um, it, it's a heaven sent thing when actually your account management teams um, can actually start a conversation strong as, it, as it, it's written there. Inbound notifications pop up. Staffing um, is a conversation and relationship industry. Recruiters are continually working uh, in, in building those lasting relationships with candidates and clients and there's a lot of value that goes into that. So we want to improve the candidate experience by making sure that inbound conversations are, are more meaningful. Um, uh, knowing who is calling um, and what has gone before and being able to bring up those records um, um, it is a, uh, a valuable way of making sure that you build and then keep that lasting relationship. Um, it yeah, I agree. That really yeah. improves the quality of the relationship, and it shows totally. that you're on top of things. When the candidate calls in, uh, you know, you greet them properly, and it and it and it shows them and demonstrates to them that you're a, a staffing firm of choice, that you're the kind of company that they would want to do business with, because they will have multiple choices, and and they will make a decision about who they want to do business with. Yeah, so I was I was down in um, I can't remember where I was Georgia or Atlanta somewhere in the last um, at an event in the last uh, month and a half Georgia I think right and um, uh, it was Atlanta and and some someone one of our clients actually came up to me and said oh, I love you all these stats that you give me but here's one for you right so over sixty percent um, of our recruitment industry customers okay. So that's nearly 800 companies, right? This is cloud core companies list candidate experience as being one of their top five business goals. You know, saving time in the process, sure. Giving back time to clients, absolutely. Accurate storage of compliant regulatory information, yes, we we help provide that. Um, maintaining supplier identity in the candidate experience is another. But building better relationships with our clients is the thing that they actually list as being the thing that adds most value in keeping their client for longer than just one interaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really great. And, and you know, what's interesting is as I look through this, it, every slide, it just reminds me you, that this technology saves time, you know, huh. and, and all of this makes that recruiter more productive because they can the those moments in time when they're actually on the phone talking to a candidate or talking to a hiring manager that's when they're adding the most value and so 
when they're when they're dialing or misdialing or looking up phone numbers or pulling up records, all those things don't bring value to the client or to the to the, the candidate. And what you're doing is you're you're really focusing the recruiter's attention on the highest value activities. Sure, it just wastes time otherwise, right? And, and look, yeah. we can all do that. We all waste time every day. So we, you know, without being clever about it, one of our one of our things here, our moral compass, right? If you like, is to actually not not create software for software's sake. Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you know, we learned that very early in our time. We want to create software and develop that software that people need to use in the market that talks to the needs that are there. I know that sounds cliche, but it's so easy as a technology company and one that's at the sort of cutting edge of driving this forward to actually build software and deliver it to the market that we think should be in the market. That's not what we do. Um, and that's why you can see us really trying to focus down on the things that will uh, save time and align with things that improve productivity and not just go straight for a profitability hit. That will come if you improve the internal pro productivity within yeah. the business. So talk, us, talk to us a little bit about how management styles and um, can ev evolve and, and how, um, how we can use communications to um, make staffing firm operations and management much more sophisticated uh, than traditionally. Yeah, that's a good question. Very good question. So, um, you know, till about a year ago, I was um, displaying prehistoric leadership myself in one respect. You know, it's according to my 20 year old son who tells me that that is right. I like so, that term uh, prehistoric. Yeah. yeah, prehistoric. Well, yeah. Um, so along with, you know, my exec colleagues, we'd wander around our business complaining um, at the number of people looking at their mobiles when really they should be working. Right. You know, why is James Rand's bottom almost seemingly always on Facebook or updating his CV on LinkedIn when, in fact, he should be making calls, right? He should be hitting those phones. Uh, and we, we really do. We stood corrected um, because in, in trying to find out what uh, uh, particularly the staffing market were experiencing, we had to accept that multi-channel work world was upon us. Mm -hmm. um, and when we actually got into it and sat down with our guys and gals, um, you know, we could see what they were delivering by the use of those clients. So in accepting that, we also had a responsibility, you know, uh, and therefore we have a need to manage our business and see those results. Of course, nothing changes whether you're prehistoric or not. But measuring that success and failure um, and acting upon it um, to be able to scale a business or learn from those considerations and then change to suit was something that we started to focus down on. And we, we need to see those actuals and understand what's happening in the business, even though we're still trying uh, to provide that flexibility of, uh, of the, within the workspace. So if we just click on one, I think we'll be able to, yeah. So I wonder how many of these questions um, can you actually, this audience, um, uh, answer for itself? You know, I, when I do this in front of a live audience, we get a show of hands. You know, mm. back in the world of now, um, we still have a responsibility to actually run our businesses. So we need to review, measure, consider, and act. And as you can see here, this is the kind of, this is just one of the simpler um, uh, views that you get a result, as a result of using the technology that starts to answer those questions for you. Um, I mean, you know, you guys, do you know um, what people are doing when they're not actually outside your office working uh, in your business? You know, we've given them the flexibility to go out, the agility to go work, but how do we know what they're actually doing? And, and the, the ability to capture that um, interaction, as I talked about earlier, using uh, technologies like CloudCall, CloudCall itself, really, it's the only one to have, um, actually uh, means that you, you whilst expending uh, time on giving them mobility and visibility, you must be able to see it from anywhere, having real-time views of team activities from anywhere, wherever they are. And understanding, you know, not just how many calls are had, but actually what's being said, what's being captured. That's the real intelligence that gives value to the data that is the net result of communication. Yeah. Does that answer that Those question? Those charts were amazing. Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about live call, call monitoring. Uh, live call monitoring. Okay. Um, in terms of live call monitoring, so people will have heard the term, um, you know, monitor, whisper, barge, right? So in our business, we spend a lot of time um, uh, eating our own dog food, I think is the old term, um, you know, living in our own world. So we, um, we play with the sales teams. We, um, we help in our training to use our own technologies to be able to listen to call recordings, uh, to listen to live conversations 
to think about how that data is being captured. And then we go the other end and see that data in the system uh, to be able to see where, in fact, um, that data is at, at any time in any one place so that we can then work out how we extract that from the system to give ourselves the, the intelligence. So, you know, your CRM and your ATS, if you don't consider it your lifeblood, then actually it's probably the vessel in which your lifeblood is carried, right? I'm, I'm being a bit over Shakespearean there. That's yeah. Like, I just I want to make a uh, comment on that. I, I know that Michael Dell of uh, Dell Computers used to listen in on phone calls uh, for people on the front line, and that's how he really understood what was going on in the market. And I think same thing is true here, where uh, if you can listen in on phone calls from from everyone, you can, as a leader, you can really get a good understanding of, of what's happening within your business and you can help coach people to higher levels of success. So I think this is an extremely powerful feature for staffing firms. I, I, I make it, whenever I go and see a client, I always ask if I can go and have half an hour on the floor. Um, often I've got engineers with me if we're going down to conduct a, a C-level review. And they, I like to go and sit on the floor and, um, and watch just how many of the leaders on that floor, the team leaders in the recruitment teams are actually um, jumping into calls, jumping onto calls with their younger or perhaps less experienced um, recruiters so that they can actually take a part in that call. Now, it used to be invasive. You know, often um, the person on the other end of the phone w wasn't used to actually having people jump on that call. Now, uh, it really is the norm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think um, in just wider sociology, people are used now to having a number of people jump on calls when they speak to their bank and their bank need to transfer them or bring in a manager. Um, and actually, it's no different now in recruitment, whereby nobody really minds if somebody who has the right knowledge at the right time is actually sharing a portion of that call to be able to offer some understanding. Um, and yeah. the technology that enables you to do that is key. Yep. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about... Um... We talked a little bit about turnover um, yeah. and the importance of tracking all of our data. Sure. Okay. So, I mean, you know, as a disruptive solutions provider, I guess, um, which we're quite proud of, um, our technology um, and ongoing innovation, if you like, is not only supplying the means of communication, um, but also the means by which it's captured, deposited correctly relevantly recalled when needed and and used as business intelligence in making us as leaders more informed. Um, you know, today uh, I was looking at something this morning where I saw business productivity, profitability and scale in staffing come from information and its application uh, as much as it does from sheer effort and hard work. Um, you know, that turnover of staff is something that we have to really protect against. Um, and it's obvious, right? You know, we've mm -hmm. talked about not just capturing, but capturing and storing in the right place. So let's consider for a moment capturing information in the correct, the correct place as opposed to just capturing it. You know, mm -hmm. if it isn't in your CRM, right, people say, did it really happen? Uh, I use that a lot because we're driving. We, we use a CRM here where, um, you know, like, uh, like RDB, um, like Tracker, like Bullhorn, like Salesforce. These are complex things for uh, people to live in every day, but the, the complexity delivers uh, a net result. So for communication transformation and automation to be truly effective, you know, you actually have to have the data to work with. So the data input is key. So, you know, it's not simply to exist or populate fields, but be able to um, intelligently call upon um, past information, period comparison, trend analysis. Uh, the list of uses is endless, all in the pursuit of, of business progress, right? But, but the raw data has to be captured and has to therefore be available. Otherwise, you can't work magic with your CRM. And that really is, we play a lot of time talking to people about making sure that they capture it and then drop it into the right place so that it's evident and usable. Yep. Yeah, people will come and go within your organization, but the data will be captured in your system of record using this approach. Yeah, and, and you know, we, we spend a lot of time really thinking about where we drop it in. Um, it's not just let's drop it into a note section, it's where we drop it in and how we drop it in that changes our front end development um, in how we capture that information. You know, and there's, there's a, a long way to go before we reach the, uh, the ceiling in terms of the way we can affect that. 
Awesome. Well, you know what? This has been fascinating, uh, sort of be taken right to the cutting edge of, of where um, uh, where we are with modern communication. So walk us through the ROI. I'm curious to hear a bit more about this because it's clear that the ROI is super high on this approach and this solution. Yeah. So, you know, if, if well, can I let me use a real example for you guys, right? You know, so we've talked about capturing the interaction. We've talked about routing it into the correct place in the CRM. We've talked about the ease of recall and res relevant business intelligent presentation. But let me give you a, a, just a real example from yesterday. Uh, I'm working with a, a relatively large um, recruiter at the moment um, in the US um, who are very close to adopting our technology for the first time. And, and I was chatting yesterday with the CIO and he was telling me, you know, We've spent hours and hours talking about the, the ROI in this business. I understand all of those things. I understand that I can't let um, my teams um, not have the flexibility and agility they need. I have to let them roam. I've got to let them work from where they need to work. Uh, and I can see the ROI in letting them do that. But you know what it comes down to? I worked out yesterday, he said, and I quote, um, for every minute I save, I'm gaining $3. That is the ROI wow, calculation that's that they did, right? So, and, it, and, it, and the reason they're able to do that is because they know the time expenditure at the moment. So their time and motion studies have given them that. And then they, te they tested our technology. We give everybody a, um, normally a two week uh, trial of our software without cost, where we will support them in that trial, set them up and let them run based on their data for a real trial. Um, and that's a live production trial, not, not, a, not a lab test, right? Mm -hmm. So they were able to run that against their time of motion study. And he told me that I didn't have to tell him, mm. right? So from an ROI point of view, um, it just can't be about words. And if, if, then, if this, then that, um, you are actually able to work out what your dollar saving is in, in adopting technology at this level. And what we've talked about today, I have to say to you is with the time we've had available is just the, uh, the very beginnings of that. If you want to drive adoption and speed um, and then create um, recountable activity in your CRM, then please come and talk to us um, and take a chance on having a try of that software if it, if it works for you. Awesome. Yeah, that's fascinating. That statistic you just shared with us. One one minute of time savings uh, leads to three dollars of cost reduction. So hey, this is a Morris, I must say, in their situation, <laughs> obviously, in your situation, it may be slightly different. It may even be more. Yeah, every situation is going to be a little bit different. But for them, I mean, that's that's substantial. And when you when you multiply that out, that's it is a lot of money, and it money. helps yeah. you sort of frame up the 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 ROI and the value. Um, sure. So, um, hey, this was this was really great. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Um, we're Talking past the pleasure. top of the hour. Um, well, I'd, like, I'd just like, listen, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity. For all those listening, thanks for taking the time. Um, and please, if my team can help in any way, just with information without obligation, uh, please reach out. Um, I know that at Staffing Tech up in Nashville, unfortunately, I won't be there because I'll be on the other side of the world. But my team, led by Hope and with Greg and some others, uh, will be very pleased to have a chat if you're around. So, uh, And I thank you very much for the opportunity that you provided this afternoon. Much obliged. Awesome. Yeah. And if you're coming to uh, uh, Staffing Tech Cloud Call, we'll be there. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one matchmaker meeting uh, with them to do a deeper dive on the technology that we just took a quick peek at and to see if it's a good fit for your business. Um, alternatively, you can go to cloudcall.com to learn more and schedule a, a personalized demo. So uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in a, less than a couple weeks in uh, Nashville. Um, and coming up on Tuesday, April 2nd, 9.30 Pacific at 12.30 Eastern, we'll be joined by Josh uh, Barrent, who's a director uh, at Textus, and we're going to be talking about uh, text messaging and communication. So thank you, everyone. Uh, Thank you, Andy, and uh, we'll see you uh, in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.